So this is the one you've been waiting for, huh? When we set out to build the Framework Laptop 16, we picked an incredibly ambitious mission. We wanted to not only build a laptop that could rival desktops from a performance perspective, but one that could actually carry in all of the repairability and upgradability that desktop computers carry. And so we invented a lot on this thing. Our ID and engineering teams really went all out. In addition to the usual framework parts of upgradability and repairability, like being able to swap out core modules like the main board, we invented an entirely new hot swappable modular input system, and maybe the most ambitious thing of all, our expansion bay system. We heard a lot of skepticism on this thing when we rolled it out. Could framework, little framework, actually solve a problem that much bigger companies took on and failed at? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Obviously, the answer is yes. There's like 10 minutes left on this video. We have, we're gonna talk about something. Yeah, I'm editing this and it's definitely shorter than 10 minutes, but we still have a lot of stuff to show you, don't worry. We have NVIDIA on board this generation on a new graphics module. So that means we actually did deliver graphics upgradability in a laptop. But before we get to that, we'll talk a bit more about what else is new this generation. We brought in a new mainboard. So we, of course, also upgraded the processor. We now have AMD's latest Ryzen AI 300 series, the same set of processors that we have in Framework Laptop 13 this year, but in the Framework Laptop 16 chassis, we've got a lot more thermal headroom. So we can actually go up to 45 watts sustained at the same time that the GPU is doing 100 watts sustained. So a lot of total combined performance here. All right, let's talk more about graphics. So we do have NVIDIA on board this generation that actually took a ton of coordination between NVIDIA, AMD, our manufacturing partner Compal, and of course our framework engineering teams to make it possible, but it was obviously worth it. We know that a lot of you wanted NVIDIA the first time around, both for gaming and for professional applications like rendering and CAD, and so really excited to get it to you. This is an NVIDIA-powered module with GeForce RTX 5070 and eight gigabytes of GDDR7. On the graphics module itself, we've actually done another improvement, which is that the USB-C port on the back, now it's not only for display output, you can actually also power and charge the laptop over that. So you can plug a single cable in from something like a monitor and be able to charge and get display output at the same time. Obviously that's super useful. We actually even updated the geometry of the expansion shell itself to be able to optimize the airflow pattern through the fans. And if we think about how this graphics module attaches back to the laptop itself, We've kept that original custom interposer solution that we developed that enables eight lanes of PCIe 4, along with now bi-directional power across that link. Along with power and PCIe, we also have display output from the discrete GPU back through a MUX that's on the main board, which means that you can actually drive the internal display right off of the DGPU to get the lowest possible latency. Looking at the display, this is the same great 165 Hertz panel with 500 nit brightness and 100% DCI P3 color space with one big modification, which is that it is now G-Sync certified. We know that not all of you love Nvidia, especially if you are on Linux. So we actually are also keeping the original Radeon 7700S graphics module option available, even with that new mainboard generation. So if you are on Linux and want those AMD open source Linux drivers, you do still have that available to you. Of course, if you don't need super high end graphics for AAA gaming titles, you just wanna play competitive FPSs or MOBAs or other later games like that from a graphics perspective, you can actually just remove that graphics module entirely and go back to the expansion base shell, which lets you have a thinner and lighter framework laptop 16. And of course, we did also introduce recently modules that you can put into that expansion base shell. So we've got our dual M.2 SSD adapter where you can drop in up to 16 terabytes of additional storage. 
Obviously, all this performance can drive a really high peak power load. And so we also developed a new power adapter for this generation. Back in 2023, when we first announced the Framework Laptop 16, we were actually the first laptop maker to take advantage of 180 watt USB PD 3.1 with this really high density GAN based power adapter. But we're not comfortable resting on our laurels. Two years later, even though it seems like we're still the only laptop maker really taking advantage of USB-C, we've introduced an even higher power adapter with a new 240 watt, also with USB PD 3.1. We worked again with our partner Chaconi to get super high power density using a new GAN architecture. If you look back at our original 60 watt adapter that we still ship today on the Framework Laptop 13, this thing was already pretty high density. This thing is actually really, really quite small. But when we went and designed that 180 watt, we pushed a lot harder. So you can see that even though we've got three times the power here, the adapter is actually just about two times the size. And now with the 240 watt, with another 60 watts of power, we are not 60 watts bigger. We are actually even higher density here. So this thing took a bunch of advanced engineering to make it possible. And we're actually also manufacturing this on one of Chikoni's new production lines in Thailand. That's actually our first product to come out of that country. We've optimized a lot of other parts of the Framework Laptop 16 too. Let's start with the thermal system. We've gotten a lot of feedback around the fans and we knew that was an area that we really needed to re-optimize. And so we've actually redesigned the fans with a new fan blade profile along with a new fan controller IC to really reduce noise. We also have Honeywell phase change thermal interface material, now both on the CPU and on the GPU. Also on the main board, of course, we've kept the three expansion card slots on each side, but this time we've got up to four simultaneous display outputs, unlike three the first go around. And we have also kept the memory upgradability, of course. So we've got two DDR5 5600 slots for 96 gigs total, along with two SSDs, so that 2280 and the 2230. So we've got an Wi-Fi 7 now using AMD's RZ717 module. We've got our second gen webcam. This is actually the one that we introduced last year on Framework Laptop 13, now brought into Framework Laptop 16. We have also updated the keyboard firmware so that if the keyboard is pressed while the lid is closed, it actually won't wake up the system. That's also a firmware update that we're gonna be bringing back to Framework Laptop 16 across the first generation too. We also updated our keyboard artwork this generation. So now the default logo on the super key is actually the Framework logo, just like it is on Framework Laptop 13 and 12. That's for all of you Linux and BSD users out there who didn't like that Windows logo. And of course we do still have one Windows option that also has a co-pilot key on it for all of you people who want that for some reason. And finally, we've also got an updated top cover. So this CNC aluminum geometry is actually updated for increased rigidity that really helps the entire system be more robust. Recapping everything we announced today on Framework Laptop 16, we've got AMD's new Ryzen AI 300 series processors, AMD and now NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5070 graphics options, updated display outputs, improved thermal capabilities, and a bunch of assorted upgrades all across the system. There is actually even more that we wanted to do this generation that didn't make the cut, and we are actually gonna have a second video where we go deeper into what we explored there. The new Framework Laptop 16 is available for pre-order today on frame.work. Just like always, you can pick up a pre-built version preloaded with Windows 11, and of course our DIY edition, where you can bring your own memory storage and operating system, including Linux. We'll be shipping this product this November. And of course, the most important thing of all is that all of these improvements that we've announced today are not just for the new Framework Laptop 16. Every single module and improvement is actually fully backwards compatible with the original Framework Laptop 16. That means you can pick up the new NVIDIA graphics module, the new mainboard, even the new top cover and swap it into the computer you already own. We set out to fix consumer electronics and thanks to your belief, we're getting closer to that goal every day. We can't wait to see what you think of the new Framework Laptop 16 and all of the creative ways that you build on top of it. Let's go fix consumer electronics together.